One of the most important things you need to look at on a soil test is phosphorus. But the problem with phosphorus is there are different readings with phosphorus and you have to make sense of what all these readings mean, what all these different tests are. So we're going to talk that through today. All right, when you talk about soil tests, you think about it. You take a sample from your field that represents your ground or the certain area that you're trying to talk about. You send it into a lab and the lab takes a look at that soil and they try and extract the phosphorus out of the soil to tell you how much is in there. Well, there are a lot of different ways they can try to extract extract that phosphorus out and so there are different tests and some labs like certain tests and feel like they're more representative of or give you a more accurate picture of how much phosphorus is in your ground and other labs think a different method may be more accurate. What we found for our farm is it really varies based on soil pH. There are certain tests that work better in high pH soils and some that are more accurate well, in low pH soils. I, I don't think it really makes that much difference if we're talking our farm or anybody's farm around the country. This is important stuff and we think this is the way that you should go. If you have high soil pH, in other words over a 7, so anything above 7, we would probably recommend that you look at the Olson test. What that Olson test is going to tell you is that's a measure of available phosphorus for this year in your soil. Well the Olson test is fine Brian if that pH is high, but yep. it, I don't feel it's very accurate on the low pH side. I think you're more accurate with the Bray test and it kind of gets a little confusing for farmers because there are really two tests. There's a strong Bray and yep. a weak Bray test or a P1 and a P2 they normally show you on a soil test. And when you say, oh no, this is getting confusing, well just think about it this way. When you've got a low pH soil, it's an acid soil, when you're trying to extract the phosphorus out of it in a lab setting to show you how much is in a soil, well if they use a real strong solution to try and pull it out, they feel like they're showing you all the phosphorus that's in your soil. But we all know that your plants aren't going to be able to get all the phosphorus out of the soil and when you think about plants, they excrete some acids to try and make nutrients come available. So they do a little weaker solution, they call that the P1 test, to show you what's going to be available this year. So they try to give you what's available this year and what your total potential phosphorus in that soil Not is. Not potential, what your total in the soil is. So P1 is what's available this year, P2 is total availability. And a lot of times we'll see big differences here, vast differences between the P1 and P2 if a lot of the phosphorus in your soil is bound up with other nutrients. Whether it's calcium, whether it's aluminum, something is tying that phosphorus up and making it unavailable to plants. And that's where we see sometimes a hundred for total phosphorus and you'll see five or ten on the available side. So again, if you've got a tremendous variance there in the soil, you know that a lot of your phosphorus is being bound up by other nutrients. All right, so you get some of these soil conditions that tie up your phosphorus. What that needs to tell you is, hey, if I keep doing the same thing on my farm, I'm going to keep getting the same results. If I've had tie-up problems and I'm not doing anything to fix it, I'm going to keep having tie-up problems going forward. Okay, so let's talk about why you have those tie-up problems. The number one cause is soil pH. You've got to get your soil pH in about that 6.3 to 7.3 range if you want maximum phosphorus availability. Once you start getting outside of that range, that's where you end up with problems. On the high end of things, calcium really binds up phosphorus pretty quickly when you get up around 8 pH or 8.5. When you get down into the low side, you get aluminum or some other nutrients that could bind up phosphorus. Either way, it's a bad deal. So what we're trying to tell you here is you don't necessarily have to spend more money on fertilizer, you just have to get your soil pH right and then some of that fertilizer that's already sitting there will come available for free. That's a good deal. Well that's true for phosphorus, it's true for every other nutrient in your soils. If you get those pHs in balance, you're going to get more of everything to become okay. available. Now let's talk a little bit more about this phosphorus thing and how you can kind of use that when you see that soil test. Alright, so let's say that you're P1 or or your Olson test, either way, let's say you're running an available phosphorus test and it comes out saying 30 parts per million. Darren, what does that mean? <laughs> well, that means you have 30 parts per million, Brian, but what you're trying to get at is how many pounds does that equal? Right. And typically when we're sending in soil samples, we send in a six inch sample. And in six inches of soil across your field, in one acre, that represents about two million pounds of soil. So if you take your parts per million, times the two million pounds that it represents per acre, that gives you your pounds per acre. So in this case, if you had 30 parts per million of P1 phosphorus, take 30 parts per million times two to get 60 pounds per acre of phosphorus. Then you look at which crop you're raising 
and you find out how many pounds of phosphorus that needs per acre. If you've got 60 pounds available, you may need to add some more, and you may not. Now, here's one of the things that you need to look at as well. What is your percent of organic matter in the soil? Let's say, for example, that you have 3% organic matter. All right, for every percent of organic matter, on average, you're going to get roughly four to seven free pounds of phosphorus that are going to come available next year. So if you take three times, let's figure on the low side, that four to seven range will figure four. So take 3% times four, that's 12 more pounds. So if we've already got 60 available, 12 more is going to come available through mineralization of the soil when that organic matter starts to break down. Now we've got a total of 72 pounds, and that's quite a bit. Well, that is quite a bit for average yields or, or even slightly above average yields when you start far exceeding that and raising 300 bushel corn or something like that you're probably going to need some more. So there's three things that I look at when it comes to fertility recommendations to get around a phosphorus tie up or poor availability situation. First of all banding that fertilizer. By keeping the fertilizer closer together rather than broadcasting a little bit across a large area band it all in a concentrated band right near the seed. So like on our farm, in many cases, our fall strip till, we'll band it about eight inches below the seed and we'll have it right there where the roots can get down to it. And we're getting root growth going down about eight inches in around a week. So within a week after planting, we're getting down to that fertility. We've used a veil on our farm. It's definitely helped us get more phosphorus available and into that plant. So that's one technology I Not do believe in. Not to get in. it available, it's to keep it available. So in other words, when you apply phosphorus, it doesn't get tied up by those poor soil conditions that you're talking about. Yep, and the other product that we've seen work is Pro Germinator. It's a liquid phosphorus source that is chelated so it doesn't have that tie up issue in the fields. It's one that I've been using right in the furrow when I've been planting my corn. So basically what Darren is saying is if you've got ideal soil pH and ideal conditions, these things probably would pay, but when you have soil conditions where your soil pH is way out of whack, you've got major problems out there, that's when these things could really pay for you on your farm. Well, phosphorus is a very important nutrient for your crop. Get your soil pHs correct. That's the biggest thing for making availability work. And then try some of these new products like Avail or Pro Germinator to help get more phosphorus into your plants. Well, having phosphorus available in your fields for crops is a great thing. The problem is that phosphorus is also available for weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what you need to do to stop this tough weed on your farm coming up later in the show.